Okay, guys. I'm here to give my review of WrestleMania 17 or WrestleMania X7. Uh, before I get into the review stuff, I want to tell you that why I'm going to title this video what I'm going to title it. The title of this review is going to be The Day That Wrestling Died. And that's because this is the day wrestling died. When Vince bought WCW, the wrestling business was never the same. And TNA has never gotten to the point of the WWE. It will never get to the point of the WWE. Uh, whereas with WCW, WWE had a legit competition. It doesn't have competition from any wrestling company now. It's never had competition since they bought WCW and ECW from any wrestling company. And that's really sad. Because the wrestling, better, the wrestling business has not been better off for it. And, you know, that's why I don't like a lot of the 2001 show. At least past the invasion, at least during the invasion angle, I don't. Uh, the ones before it, eh, that's stuff like that. But the invasion angle pay-per-views, I don't really like many of them. So, this is before that, but not by much. This is also, depending when you were born, people say this is the greatest WrestleMania of all time. Uh, from a match quality standpoint, probably, yes, it is. From an overall match quality standpoint, from significantly good match after good match after good match, and feeling like a WrestleMania in a way. But, to me, it's one of the best, probably the second best, right behind WrestleMania 3. WrestleMania 3, and I'm not going to rate this ahead of WrestleMania 3, because I don't like the overall finish to this pay-per-view, and I'll get to that in the actual review. Uh, and there's one really horrible match on here. So, there's a little bit out of the way of certain stuff. Now, WrestleMania 17, April the 1st, 2001, from the Reliant Astrodome in Houston, Texas. <laughs> Opening contest. WWE Intercontinental Championship match, Chris Jericho versus William Regal. Uh, this is an okay match. It's two and a half stars. I don't really think it's bad. It's two and a half stars of Chris Jericho winning in his second WrestleMania. So two and a half stars. So then we get a six-man tag match. The APA and Taz versus the right to censor. Uh, not a horrible tag match. Could have been better, not horrible. One star, APA and Taz win. So then we get a triple threat match for the WWE Hardcore Championship. Raven versus Kane versus The Big Show. Uh, this is a two-star match. It is a traditional hardcore match, but it's a little bit more entertaining than most traditional hardcore matches. With lots of really funny and innovative spots. So, it's two stars. I would give a normal hardcore match about one. Uh, but this one's a little bit more entertaining than most, so it's getting two. With Kane winning, and he pins the big show. So then we get the WWE European Championship match. Test versus Eddie Guerrero. Okay match here. Two stars. Eddie wins when he cracks Test of the European Championship with the referee distracted by Dean Malenko. Uh, Eddie would get fired shortly after this, though, due to uh, drugs. He would be rehired in 02, but... So... Next match, Kurt Angle versus Chris Benoit. Three and a half stars. Would have been four, but I don't necessarily agree with the uh, finish here. Uh, and this is really the most interesting match on here. It's just the only real match on here that the two participants in never had a feud uh, going into it in any way, shape, or form with each other. It was just be uh, This match was just happening because Angle and Benoit, they each told each other that neither of them have an opponent for WrestleMania, so let's have a match. That's brilliant. Not every match you book needs to have any kind of story behind it. Some of them, and look what Benoit and Angle in 2001 ended up having three pay-per-view. This starting here and going through, they turned this into a rival, even though it was not meant to be. It was just to get two guys on the show. But three and a half stars, Angle ends up a roll of hooking the tights. That's why I don't agree with the uh, finish to it. Three and a half stars, though. So then we get the... The only true bad match on here. The WWE Women's Championship match. Ivory versus China. 
this is a prolonged squash match with China winning. And a very lazy pin cover, too, by the way. So, no stars here. China wins the Women's Championship. She would leave after Judgment Day. And the Women's title would be disbanded, would be defunct until Survivor Series. So, then we get the street fight. A street fight. Shane McMahon versus Mr. McMahon with special referee Mick Foley. This is a four-star street fight. Uh, it's a very good street fight that tells the story of the match. Good to have a, interesting spots. Uh, finish comes when Linda McMahon stands up from her sedated thing and gives Vince a low blow, and then Shane goes coast to coast and pins into a trash can and pins Vince. So yeah, four stars here. No real complaints. Then we get to by far the best match here, and arguably one of the top ten matches in the in entirety of Wrestle in WrestleMania as a whole. The TLC match or TLC two for the W for the World Tag Team Championships. The Dudley Boys versus the Hardy Boys versus Edge and Christian. This is a five star match. Now Spike R Spike Dudley Rhino and Lita do get involved in this match. And in some cases, that could hinder a match because I think it's overbooking. But in this case, I think it enhances it because Spike, Rhino, and Lita essentially are enhancing the match by taking, you know, they're enhancing the match. So, yeah. Nor, but in a different situation, I don't think they would enhance it. But they actually managed to enhance this match, actually, to where I would say they should have just had it be all three Dudleys versus Hardys and Lita versus Edge, Christian, and Rhino in this TLC match for the tag titles with all nine people in it, officially. I think that actually would help the match even more. So that's why I think Spike, Lita, and Rhino actually enhance this match. Uh, five stars. Five star classic. One of the greatest WrestleMania matches of all time. Wish Edge and Christian would not have won it since they won the Triangle Ladder match. They won the first TLC match and they won this match. So it's. Uh, but then we have the Gimmick Battle Royal. This is a one star match because it's. A really entertaining trip down memory lane for older fans. Is it any good from a match standpoint? No, but it's a battle royal. You don't expect battle royals to be classics. But it's really funny. It's it's just a really funny thing to have. Because it's one of those things where, you know, Iron Sheik wins this thing because he's the only guy who couldn't do an over-the-top rope bump. But... Then we get The Undertaker versus Triple H. Four and a half stars going into five star territory, but there's a really overly long ref pump that I disagree with. And that's why it's only four and a half. Uh, Triple H finish on The Undertaker, Triple, uh, last rides Triple H and gets the win. So, yeah. I disagree in, so, yeah, that's, so, disagree there. That's why this is not four and a half. So that's why it's four and a half and not five. So then we get the WWE Championship match. The Rock versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. Another four and a half star match. Again, this match would be five stars. I disagree with the finish. It's also a no disqualification match that was made without anyone's knowledge. I mean, it does play into the finish about how the match finishes. But it was a random change, in a way. Uh, but that's not the problem I have with The problem I have with it is the overall finish, because if you know wrestling history, you know that the WWE turned Stone Cold Steve Austin heel at this event and aligned him with Vince McMahon, which never made any sense from a storyline standpoint at all. Why would Austin need Vince McMahon's help? And why would he all of a sudden just join a Vince McMahon for? Uh, and really, I think this heel turn is what really helped elevate The Rock more. Because Austin and Rock are at this point where they were the top two guys and the fan reaction was almost a split reaction. WWE really turned Austin heel and allowed Rock to really overtake Austin as top face. Uh, and even when he turned Austin face, he never kind of recovered the pops he used to have. So, this has had a very negative effect, and like I said, it makes no sense. It never made any sense for, Morrison, for Austin's character to ever be aligned to Vince McMahon. 
So that's why this is a four and a half star match. Really good match, but the overall finish of it's bad. And it was just because Vince owned WCW, so he realized he had no real uh, ramifications anymore. He could do what he wanted. No one was going to say anything. He could do what he wanted when he wanted to do it. So, yeah. That's why this match is four and a half and not five. I know people give it five. I just disagree with the finish. If they did not have that finish... I would not, if they did not have the finish of make Austin Lyman, man, I would have given this match five stars happily. But because of the finish, I can't do that. So, uh, next in this is WrestleMania 18, which WWE has the wrong match in the main event slot. I'll get to that when I review WrestleMania 18, or X8 as it was called for some idiotic reason. This is the these two WrestleManias, X seven and X eight. It's the final. It's the Final Fantasy direct sequel problem. Just think about it. There are only there's technically two direct sequels to a Final Fantasy game. Final Fantasy ten two, which is ten ten dash two, and then thirteen two, which is X I I I dash two. So I don't know where that comes from, and uh, it's just weird. So. But that's for t that will be for tomorrow's vid. Uh, so if you like the video, like button is down there, subscribe button is down there. Uh, this will be in the WrestleMania series playlist. And if you are interested about my Mystic Force review for Power Rangers Mystic Force, that'll be uploaded probably on Friday because I'll probably finish it tomorrow night. I'll probably finish it tomorrow, write my review on it Friday, so it'll probably be uploaded Saturday. Uh, so. Thank you for watching. Bye.